Let's fix some helicopters. We'll start, and we'll leave these two aside. So I got, I got this today for five whole dollars. And that should fix the Nano. Should be good, or at least partially fix the Nano. I gotta get the, uh, I got a Blade Nano CPX. I gotta get a cowling for it. This cowling's gotten beat up a little bit. So I'm going to try and fix this, but in the meantime, I'm just going to put the replacement on. And that should return it to airworthy status. However, just because the helicopter can be flown, doesn't mean I can fly it. But I'll get better. Okay, about to. So, now at least it will sit. It's such an amazing machine. Okay, so that's sorted. And I got glue. So I can fix these, at least in theory. Oh no, that's open. Okay. Where do they make super glue bottles out of that super glue doesn't seal them shut? These are the things I want to know. Alright, so let's check for fitment. That'll totally fit. Don't know how to bind it in the meantime though. Should probably loosen it on this side. Yeah, it'll work. Let's see if it'll work. This is the distinct smell of cyanoacrylate, so this is not the melty cement kind of glue. This is just plain old super glue. Useful tip, when you're trying to bond super glue, blowing on it, like trying to get it to evaporate and dry, no, that only works for like evaporative glues, like, you know, uh, works kind of well with model cement. But with super glue, I could be wrong, but I was always taught that super glue um, hardens on contact with moisture. So if you want it to harden quickly, do an eyeglass fog blow on it, like, like that. I don't know if it actually works or not, but it makes me feel better. So, oh yeah, we're starting to bind. Okay. Ooh, shit. The important thing is to not glue your damn hand to the bottom. I have a lifetime of gluing my hand to the model. Hmm. Alright, so I'm just going to sit here and hold this for a minute because there's nothing else I can do. This is terribly exciting, isn't it? So somebody was asking me about what helicopters do I have and what would I recommend for somebody just getting into it. I'm going to put in a little bit more. For your first helicopter, I would recommend, if, if you're new to radio-controlled helicopters and you want to get into it, I don't have it in front of me, but the first one I would recommend is a Blade um, Scout. I think it's like the Scout CX or something like that. I don't know. Scout CP or something. But I don't know. It's called the Blade Scout. They're usually red. I don't think I've ever seen one any other color. It's a little three-channel... Uh, kind of rotating coaxial helicopter. They're really simple. They're they're not cheap cheap. Um, they're about fifty bucks give or take. But you got to understand, you're you're not getting a mall toy helicopter. If you just want a piece of shit mall toy helicopter that you're gonna play with and get bored with and throw away, then go to the mall. Go to Spencer or whatever and buy a $20 piece of shit 3-channel 
play with it, throw it away, and go on with your life. If you're actually interested in helicopters, and you want to get something that you can get parts for and fix when it breaks, and they will break. Yes, yes, Jabroni, they will break. Um, they cost a little more, but not a lot. You can get a lot in the $50 range. Um, now, it's really easy to buy more helicopter than you can fly. That's really easy to do. So I recommend you start out, get one, you'll never need more than one, but get a blade, um, scout, and fly the hell out of it. You can fly it indoors, in fact you probably can't really fly it outdoors in any kind of a wind. They're rock simple to fly, they're durable as hell, you can just crash it all the time, and you're going to. Um, and they're, they're great. Parts, the big thing with getting the hobby ones as opposed to the toy ones, parts are readily available. Any hobby shop has them. If you buy it on Amazon, you'll see all the parts for it on Amazon, and if you're any kind of mechanically minded, it's not a big deal to fix them when they break. Um, and it's, it's just good. The downside to that is it's going to teach you the controls wrong. Because on the Scout, because it's a three channel, it's got on the left stick, up and down is throttle, and there's nothing left and right on the left stick. On the right stick, um, up and down is forward back cyclic, left and right is your rudder, your yaw, as opposed to any real helicopter, at least in the United States, we use mode two. Um, your yaw should be on your left stick, left and right. And if you learn it that way, then you're set. But if you learn it the way that the nano, or the way that the scout's going to teach you, it's going to mess you up a little bit. But you'll be all right. You will endure. You will adapt. I did, and a lot of people I've talked to did. So there's three basic classes to the helicopters. There's the coaxial, or counter-rotating, that's where you've got two propellers on top, and they spin in opposite directions. They don't usually have a tail rotor to speak of, or if they do have a tail rotor, it points up and down, which is really dumb. Like, they mount the tail rotor horizontally, and it blows air up or down. Those helicopters tend to suck. Um, but they're really, really forgiving, they're really basic, they're really cheap. Then you go up to the four-channel stuff, where there's four channel fixed pitch and the pitch is the angle of the blade okay so you look at the blades and you have an angle the angle on these blades doesn't change these are fixed pitch blades so you have is that going to hold i think it's going to hold i'm not sure but we're going to find out i believe in you i believe in you all right this is v911 uh, version 2, fixed pitch. These blades, if you move the blades, the blades move as one unit, okay? And they're connected to this weird thing up here with little weights on the end. This is called a fly bar. This is a four-channel helicopter. I would consider this beginner, but you don't want this for your first one unless you get a lot of parts. Um, they're pretty durable, they take a lot of abuse, but you can still break them pretty easy. By the way, these things are way more delicate than you think. So by really durable, that means, you like with the Scout, it's really durable. You can crash it a lot, but you can still break them pretty easily. Um, compared to like toy trains, which is where I started out, these things are a million times more delicate. But this is four channels. So instead of where with a three channel, you can go up and down, you can turn, and you can kind of go forwards or backwards. With a four channel, you can do all that, but you can also move side to side. They call it an aileron movement, um, or crabbing. I've heard people call it crabbing. But it's all cyclic. This has a basic little swash plate to it, two servos up front, and uh, a, a dedicated motor in the back. These are all brush type motors, so they're the shittier of the two types of motors. There's brushed and brushless. Brushed is worse. But this is a good, like, once you're serious. So you start with the Blade Nano, or, sorry, you start with the Blade Scout, and then you go up to, like, the V911. You get the version 2, not the version 1. The batteries are different, and it's a little bit better in some other ways that I don't know. But it's just, I've read a couple things, and they say it's a little bit better, and the batteries are different. Um, I have two of these. They're awesome. And this is what I fly more than anything. This is the level that I'm at. This is what I can comfortably fly, and I'm going to take this out in a minute and fly. 
So, yeah. So, V911, I don't know who makes it. I should know who makes it. Um, yeah, I don't know who makes it. But this is a four channel helicopter, V911, okay? Version two. The next step up from there, if you're taking big steps, is if you want to get into collective pitch, this is the smallest, cheapest collective pitch helicopter I could find. Now, you'll notice, we'll, here's a weird rule of thumb. The more shit there is up here, the easier it is to fly. The lower you get, the harder it is. So we started with twin rotor coaxial helis, so you had a bottom rotor and a top rotor and a fly bar. Those are the easiest because you got all this stuff up here and it's self-writing and it's trying to trying to sort itself out. Like you can see if I pick this up by the fly bar, well, it doesn't show really well, but if I move the fly bar, you'll see the rotor moves. So the fly bar is held out by centrifugal force and it's always, no matter what the orientation of the helicopter is, it's going to pendulum a little bit under the fly bar. So if you're flying this forward and the fly bar is kicked back like this because you're flying it forward, um, at the end, when you let go of the stick, it's just going to go it's going to pendulum a little bit because that's what fly bars do. So this always wants to end up straight and level for the most part. And it'll, it'll try to do that. Now we've got nothing there. It's just one rotor, no fly bar. And with this, instead of the whole rotor moving as one, as a, 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 a cyclic movement, really, that would be a cyclic movement, this is capable of collective movement. So the rotors can move independently. And I might even be able to do that. Let me see if I can do this without having to change all my throttle and pitch curves. Um, we'll put a battery in it. Let's try not to break the new thing yet. All right, I'm not gonna plug it in until I turn my controller on. Oh, habit to get into. I don't know if this is true, but I've been taught turn your controller on first. I really gotta glue that in a way. All right, you're cool. Then plug the battery in on the helicopter. Once you plug the battery in on the helicopter, you have to immediately flip the helicopter over and set it on a level surface. Because the little gyro inside is going to do magic. Now you can hear it doom when it comes to life. Let me see if I can show you this stuff up close. See if I can show you this stuff not quite so close because macro mode sucks on this camera. All right, you can see now this is really subdued, but uh, got my throttle hold on. Uh, pitch goes to nothing with throttle hold on. All right, I'm gonna hold this down. This really sucks. I need a cameraman. I don't have three hands, so I gotta put the camera on here. Hope to hell that stays still. Pick this up in such a way that it doesn't eat my damn hand. And try and show you the collective pitch movement. Hang on. Ah, shit. See I can't I can't just turn it on because the damn thing will take off. All right, this is so not gonna work. Why did you turn off? What is wrong with you? Hang on, that shouldn't do that. Give me a moment, please. Yeah, that's just weird, hang on. What are you doing and why? <laughs> That's just freaking out.
That is all kerfluffly. I don't know what's wrong with my helicopter. But it's not happy, I know that. And it's got a really bad vibration. Huh. Something's messed up here. Alright, I gotta check this out. But I'm not gonna do it right now. This is really a terrible blog. So, what I wanted to show you was all of this linkage, which I could if the camera would focus. Can you focus? Okay, so that's all your servos and that. You can see there, there isn't a lot up in the top here. And that's where things get interesting. And I don't know why it's behaving the way it is, and it kind of bothers me. <coughs> but it shouldn't have that really vicious vibration. So I don't know. All right, I'm going to fix this other one here. And then we're going to go see if we can fly this at all. I'm not going to try flying this one because, A, it's acting weird, and I don't know why. And, B, I'm not good enough to fly that yet. That's where I mentioned it's really easy to buy helicopter beyond what you're capable of. A lot of people do this. They'll see a really badass helicopter and they'll spend a pile of money. And they'll go out and buy something that they, they get home, they fire it up, and crash it instantly. And you're going to. Like if I went out and bought a really badass big T-Rex, I don't know, 700 or whatever the biggest one is right now. If I, I could do that, but if I did... I'm just going to crash it and destroy it, or hurt myself, which is very easy to do with these things. They will try to kill you. Um, so yeah, just don't do that. That's why I have a bunch of little ones. I'm working my way up. And even though I'm reasonably competent with flying like the V911s, I'm actually pretty good with them, I think. I would say I'm pretty good with them. Um, I still love flying my little scout and that. I keep it upstairs. I fly it in my office. It's fun. I fly it in my room. I have actually sat in my bedroom with the helicopter and flown it, sitting on my bed, landing it on, uh, on my laptop on my bed. Because I'm a nerd. See, this one just glues right together, no problem. This one's just happy to be here. It's just happy to be fixed and it wants to fly again. So I'm, I have to hold it together for a minute. So you're just going to have to be patient. I got nothing. You'll just have to entertain yourself for a minute. I'm sorry. It's my day off, man. I don't want to hear it. Hey, you're watching the Sunday blog. This is as good as it gets. At least for a few minutes. Batman, Doogie, Rose, and Jabroni are here. Jabroni's next door doing stuff in Studio D. He's probably playing video games. And uh, everybody else is out in EMDH working on, like, Batman's landlord's truck or something. I don't know. But they're fixing something. Okay, that's totally good. All right, I'm going to let that dry. This one's cockeyed. But you know, I don't think it needs to be perfectly straight. I think it needs to be attached. So we'll see how that goes. This one... This one, I don't know. I'm just going to put a little drop of glue on this and let the damn thing set and hope for the best. I don't like cyanoacrylate glue so much as I like model cement, plastic cement, the solvent set glues. I'm really good with that, the stuff that gets melty. I've been building models since I was a little kid, so I'm really good at the touch and time and whatnot of model set glues. All right, that's cool. Now, I'm going to take this helicopter and 
It's number two. Yes, number your helicopters so you remember which controller goes with which helicopter. Uh, I'm going to grab a helicopter. I'm going to grab a couple batteries. And controller number two. And let's go fly a helicopter. My helicopter doesn't sound like that. All right, so turn on your radio. The radio do its thing. Now I'm using normal size batteries. I was running the big batteries earlier, so after you plug the, ba okay, this is a thing to know when you get into these that isn't exactly intuitive. Turn this on first, then put the battery in. Once you put the battery in, very quickly, put the helicopter on a flat level surface because it's going to set up the gyros. The first one I got didn't tell you about that, and that sucked to figure out on my own. Once it sets up its own little gyros, though, the light will come on solid and you should be cool. So this is going to be trimmed for way heavier batteries, so I'm going to just re-zero my trims, and this is going to go a little ape shit when it first takes off. It's probably going to go that way. Or it could take off backwards, because, yeah. You want to come down here? Whoa. <laughs> Hi. Hey, you doing? The heater's on, and that's making things interesting. It wants to climb really bad. I'm at the same level of throttle, and it's changing altitude like crazy. Come on down. Come on down. There we go. Let's get over there. <laughs> I love how it's just careening around. <laughs> there is like no control over this thing at all. It's really cool. <laughs> Batman, you almost died. <laughs> they want a little plastic helicopter. You say that, <coughs> little fuckers hurt. All right, I'm gonna trim way forward. All right, dude, ready to make that? Uh. Reassembled and I have no extra parts. Well, that's always a good sign. <laughs> and you bolted that big harness connector back in? Yep. Did the other one get bolted back on the fuse Both block? Got back in place. Um, the alarm will probably go off when you reconnect ah. the battery. It's really weird flying with the heater on. It's like the hand of God comes up and just grabs your helicopter and spins it around. Oh, we can wait until he's done playing. Yeah. I'm waiting for you to hit one of those power cables. <laughs> Heat power cables? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. There's your battery. I got the battery. <laughs> those, those power cables, I almost had it. Almost you were had trying it. to be a smart ass. I was trying to be a smart ass. I slalomed through two of them. So you put the battery back in, you reset it, check it out, and see if she flies. I didn't see any other parts but nope. <laughs> How about not on a How about, busted cable? Well, the idea is to get up, but I got a really weird, over here, the air is moving that way, over here it's up and down, and in the back corner it's slamming me back into the flags. Why? Right into the wall. When you come out here, it's really down. Say that, but I'm moving the throttle and it ain't moving back. So, well, you might have knocked the connection. I think I knocked the battery loose. The dog was like, holy oh, shit! the furnace turned off! Yeah, the dog's like, can I eat that? Can it be my friend? That's probably the most resilient ones you've had so far. It's good because I crash it a lot. 
I'm not very good at flying this damn thing. That was like a miniature of the first one. No, it's the same as... Oh, you mean the big, the yeah. First big one? Yeah, like that one died a lot. Now, I'm just holding it straight and level, and you can see how it dips way down right in the middle of the room. And now we're moving sideways. I'm only steering it forward. And I'm steering it at the same rate of forwards, and it slows way down in the middle of the room, and I don't know why. So for people looking for a toy helicopter, is this is this a good one? Seems all right. This is pretty badass, yeah. This is the V911 version 2. Do not expect to be able to fly it this good out of the box. <laughs> you will have to practice a lot. I suck at this really bad, and I fly this three times a day every day. Apparently you got Patrick up. Yeah? Yeah, he said he bought a little one. Yeah. It slows way down and then it speeds up as it gets further away. Maybe the uh, heating unit itself affects the perception of the remote. I don't think that's it. I think it's the residual air currents in the room. Now remember I was telling you about that fly bar thing? Watch the helicopter. I'm going to point it that way. And I'm going to gun it forward and then I'm going to stop. See how it tilts back on its own? Yeah. You can see the fly bar. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be able to catch that on the camera. Yeah, I don't know if it'll show it. <clears throat> the, the whole angle back thing that it's doing? It's doing that on its own. But with four channels, you can do this movement. You can, you can go sideways. Whoa. <laughs> Get the hell away from that thing, shall we? Yeah, it right as it comes on. Whoa. I was trying to land on the table. Oh, oh, we might be all right. Don't touch it. I gotta let it resync. It freaked out a little. No, my battery's too low. That's full throttle. It's just gonna sit down softly. That's another thing to get used to. Little tiny batteries and you're making something fly with it. That one little battery has to handle the radio, the motor, everything, all the controls in that and it's only a uh, 0.48 watt hour battery 3.7 volts 130 milliamp hours oh, so wow. you only get a few minutes thankfully you can get a lot more batteries and they're cheap with the brush type motors don't fly it more than like twice consecutively otherwise you can burn them up really easily but you take the other battery out turn that on now, you'll, you remember how it was really slow and sluggish at the end there? You put this in, and now it's just going to jump and be ready to go. We're going to get our sink. Gyro is calibrating. It's getting sink and all that. And off we go. Ah! Shit! That hurt. That would have been funny if it landed on the beam. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get the forklift out to get it down. <laughs> Found it. All right. When you drop it from high, really, really high, plug the battery back in. That is not a level surface shit. And before you just take off, spin it up easy and make sure it doesn't go because sometimes he'll knock something loose and they'll just freak the fuck out. So. Oh, hang on. Let's trim that a little. On your controller, you'll have these buttons. They're in the same spot on almost every controller. They're called trim. 
And what they do is, if it's drifting in a particular axis, they'll let you tighten that up. See your propeller is a little wibbly wobbly. More so than it should be. I don't know, they're pretty wibbly wobbly to begin with. Something just pushed me down really hard. That was weird. Alright, we're drifting a while. The one tail coming up, so you might drift that way. Oh! Come on down, stay out of that ceiling. Tennis racket. <laughs> 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 that was an interesting way to turn around. Okay. Use the grapple maneuver. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a lot of transitional lift there. You know, it's putting me up into the ceiling. Transitional lift, the translational lift, depending on who you ask, is uh, when you start moving forwards really fast. Oh, we're losing the lift now. The helicopter will uh, will start to go upwards. Yeah, it's wobbly. I don't. That's weird. It's probably been. I might have knocked something loose or something. Might have been that whole not level surface thing too. Hi. And we're drifting. Let's get it over where we can land safely before we run out of battery because we're not far away from that. I've got good control. I can pirouette. Front, back, left, right. It's just wobbly, so I might have knocked something loose, I don't know. Wow, now the thing's kicked back on. Come over here. So there is a brief introduction to some of the basics. I'm going to try resetting this card. Give it a good look over. Everything appears to be in the right spot. Something's okay. Nothing's broken. All the weights are in the right spot. All my linkages Just are connected. This? No, that's, that's. Everything looks like it should. Let's take a look inside. I might have knocked the gyro board loose or something like that, but I don't think it has a separate gyro. Yeah, I think the gyro is like in here. So that all looks right. And set it down. <laughs> without the body. They'll fly without the body, they're just weird. It behaves weird. All of a sudden, he changes weight. It isn't the weight that's messing with me right now, it's the furnace. Can I please have my helicopter back? When 
Now if you come front you have run. <laughs> Sorry about that, Doogie. <laughs> no! Get away from that! So, yeah. It appears to be alright. I don't... Give it a second to sort its brain out. Yeah, I don't see any wobbliness. By the way, if you want to see the servos, you can see them from the back here. Here, you can see the servos. Can you see the two little servo motors there? Hold on, it's focusing. There we go. Okay, see the, the servo motors are up, are the things that are moving the little levers. You can see them. So that's your left and right cyclic. Forward and back. And I could get into how those work, but that gets into precession, and oh god, does that get fun in a hurry. That's cool. So that's forward cyclic, back, left, right. If I had collective pitch on here, which this helicopter doesn't because it's fixed pitch, but if I had collective on here, you'd see both these go up and down together as well. So here, we'll put the canopy back on. Everything appears to be happy. For a second, it's just like it's stuck <laughs> under the metal here. Yeah, we're out of battery. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, fuck. So, yeah, my batteries are dead. Um, don't throw the batteries right onto charge. If you pick up the battery and you feel warm at all, like, Put them on your lips if they feel warm at all, then don't charge them. Um, let them cool off. So, yeah. That's Helicopters 101, and that's some of the ones I have, and now you know. So the first one, you want to get the uh, Blade Scout. The second one, V911 version 2. After that, you'll know enough to be able to make your own decisions and what the hell you want. So, yeah. You guys have fun. That's today's Captain's Blog, Helicopters 101.